Hi, it's Hazel. I don't know about you, but I think I'm finally ready. I had to put hand lotion on so my chapped hands don't scare you. And then I had to pop a lozenge to maybe settle down the tickle in my throat that makes me keep clearing my throat, which is so annoying, both for me and for you, I'm sure. So today I am back, hopefully about to finish um, what I was calling an accordion journal. I think the fancy dancy name is in fact concertina. So I will show you what is done and hopefully finish off the remainder today um, here in front of you. Oh, I did say last time that I was going to show how I could. Okay, let me back up. I'm always trying to figure out how much prep to do to keep the video flowing and, um, you know, at a sort of a reasonable length. And, you know, actually showing you something happening. So I talked about, um, you know, the possibility of adding another page in front of you, like with you. That, um, unfortunately, is not going to work because I've already finished the pages to some degree and that would be going a step backwards and causing a problem. Um, when I get to the end, though, I'll show you what I would have done or, you know, had the timing been right. Anyway, let's assume that this is my cover. I've got a um, vellum belly band there with a tag and a little tiny envelope. I won't go through in very much detail because maybe there will be a final flip through. I noticed that because this paper is not particularly strong, just in the handling that I've been doing, uh, you know, back and forth, back and forth, I needed to reinforce every fold with some washi tape. And I think it's commonly acknowledged that washi tape on its own uh, doesn't have enough stick to remain in place. So I had used um, glue stick when I was uh, <clears throat> prepping for this video, I noticed that even that hadn't worked everywhere. So sometimes a little, you know, dot of uh, art glitter glue is required as well. Anyway, I digress. So we open it up and to be honest, I can't remember what I showed you last time. I, this may be new. So I had added some washi tape, <laughs> my initial. This is um, I don't know, it's sort of a, like a heavier card. No, uh, it's actually two layers. This printed image and a die cut flower. So I doubled them up and made a little tiny uh, tuck spot here. I'm finally starting to use the, the uh, coat check, uh, or at least half a coat check that I have in my stash. And this is, of course, a side tuck, so I just put in some um, some ratty old paper. That paper is over 100 years old. Again, a combination of washi tape, and I'm and I'm sticking in my in the colorway that you see going on here. Oh, here's the other half of the code check. So this is a pocket that I made with, I guess, a piece of um, the same album paper photo album paper, some car cartoon, some coloring paper, some stickers, and a, um, a sticker, a mushroom sticker. So again, I, I said I wouldn't do a detail flip through and yet here I am. So onward. Okay, so this is a page that we will work on today. Um, well, let's just, let's just work on it. So, <coughs> excuse me. What I figured out is that, I don't think I'm going to bother inking that. 
these are just some black and white images that I um, distressed with two different colors of uh, ink. I thought these images would look good here. This is a paper flower. Now this little thing, I used uh, my oval punch, one and three quarters by seven eighths, to try to salvage some more scraps out of this. I had used this uh, twall paper for some die cutting and there were several, you know, there's several parts that heaven knows we can't throw that in the garbage. So what I did with my oval punch, where I couldn't get an entire oval like this, Oops, there's a hair. Um, I got these little halves, or more than half, or less than half, um, that could be little tabs. And I think you'll see one coming up. So, in case um, you're not aware, or haven't thought of it, or heaven forbid, would think about throwing something in the garbage, using a tiny little punch, this is a 5 eighths, There are many more little doohickeys that we can get out of, out of this paper. I don't know if I've ever told you, but my mom and dad had a bakery for many, many years. And that was back in the day when, when bakers still did all the, you know, the hard work, getting up early, making um, bread and, and uh, pastry from scratch. Anyway, if you've ever seen dough rolled out and um, someone about to make donuts, you know that you minimize the amount of waste and space between, between donuts. So pretend these are donut circles. Number one, you don't want to waste anything. And number two, if you have a whole bunch of, um, if this in fact was dough, you'd end up squashing it up, re-rolling it, and doing it again. But of course, every time you do that, it makes the dough tougher and tougher. Now, just how ridiculous is this? But let me do it anyway. If I cut there, you'll see there's a gap. But looky there, I've got a new shape. So I can't help but think about donuts when I'm, whenever I'm trying to use up bits and pieces like this. I won't make you watch me do the rest of it, but know that I will be doing this. And I don't, I also have my one inch. I don't think there's a space. Well, maybe, no, I don't think so, no. Anyway, so that's just another way to make more scraps, and avoid wasting anything. Okay, so let us um, actually do something. Okay, so I said that I'm going to work on this page, and I'm still trying to get used to this new setup here at my desk, so hopefully if I keep... Let me just stand up and see what's what here. So I have to actually be fairly far away from where I'm sitting in order to have you fully, or have it fully in shot. So, whoops, I'll try to do that. Okay. So this is um, glued down. It's not going anywhere. It's not a tuck. Oh, damn. Sorry, did I say, did I say damn on camera? Let me tuck that in, because of course the, the thing here is that with a concertina, you've got images on both sides. So what I'm going to do, and I sort of rough tore that, I was going to add, where's my little, see how things just disappear right before your very eyes? I had the oval. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, 
Well, let's demonstrate versatility by switching plans at the last moment. I can't find it, so I'm going to use, what do we have here? Just a scrap. Okay, I sometimes use book jackets for my gluing surface simply because they tend to be glossy. They're not that practical for using in an actual journal and it seems to work. So, because I wanted a third element here, I now have to come up with something else. I have these things. Oh yeah, it is a sticker. Okay, let's use the, um, the hexagon. So I like the raggedy edge. Let me see how much room I have here. Since I'm gluing it down, it doesn't matter if this extends a bit past. So let's just rip that there. Put glue on. And I use uh, what I call you. Ooh. Okay, which is the top here. So I'm putting glue just on the bottom half of this because I do want it to extend past the past the edge of the paper too. Okay. Then again, because none of us really trust stickers. of any sort, I'm adding some glue, maybe I'll do it like so, and I guess the beauty of glue stick is that you do have those few seconds where you can, um, you know, move things around, slide them a bit before the final positioning, and I think for this I'd better use our glitter glue. Isn't that just a great, <laughs> great bottle? Uh, this is the very first bottle that I bought. And then I bought, I think, oh my goodness, maybe uh, a, uh, wait, 16 ounces is, is a quart, <laughs> a quart refill. So I have a lot of it and I just keep, you know, refilling obviously the, the same, um, the same original bottle. That's why it looks so grungy. This glue is expensive, but it does go a long way and it performs beautifully. So if you're ever wondering if it's, oh, there it is. There it is. Well, what happens if I add another element here? <sighs> Maybe I should just have it tucked out at the back. <laughs> this was part of a... This has some damage to it, but I don't care. Okay. <laughs> I just put the glue on the wrong side, people. I put it on the face of it. Oh, Lord. Okay, let's do it this way. Now, glue this down. I won't bother inking. I'm not one of those people who believes that everything in, under the sun has to be inked. A little bit tricky with the bumpy little flower there. But there should be enough glue here to make sure that it adheres well. Usually you can tell by, you know, just angling it to the light and checking for 
areas that may not. Mm, let's go that way a bit. Let's not get off the page. And if you're new to this whole business, most of us use hotel key cards or something similar or expired credit cards to do our smooshing down. Okay, so I would consider that page done unless I do find a sentiment at some point and want to add it, but we'll see. You don't need to watch that. Oh, I thought I had a plan. What was my plan for that page? I'm at, oh, here it is. I'm asking you as though you would know what was in my mind. Okay, this is one of those um, lace samp uh, samples that I got in a recent thrift haul. And, okay, I think I'm going to pull out the big guns for this one. This is a Fabri-Tac. It, too, is a wonderful glue. It, too, is expensive. But this one is a lot more finicky. Most of us have decanted it into these uh, Sugar Bell icing bottles because of the fine tip. However, the glue is a little bit like molasses, and it moves really slowly. And it plugs up easily. <laughs> and those are all as good qualities. But it um, it is wonderful for hold. Let's see. So I'm just, I think it'll be simpler to put the glue on the paper rather than on the lace. So I'm, I'm just eyeballing it here about an eighth of an inch from the edge of that ruler. And just past this thing. And about a quarter of an inch off the bottom of that paper. So I'm starting here just above the four. So this is when you pull out the muscle. And do a relatively straight bead of glue. I don't, I, that may not be t high enough. Much with a lot of lace, it's hard to tell um, back from front. So I'm not going to sweat that because if I can't tell and I'm really looking for differences, then certainly any recipient of the book is not going to, to be able to tell the difference either. And it probably just means that it's a really nice lace because... Both sides are equally nice. Now, one of the good things about Fabri-Tac is that it does not set up immediately, which means you have a wee bit of repositioning time if necessary. And one of the bad things about Fabri-Tac is that it doesn't set up immediately. <laughs> so the other good thing is that if you gob some of it around where you don't want to, you can quickly sort of roll it off and, um, you know, it doesn't leave a mark. So that's, that's a good thing. Now I can't, I don't know if I figured out what I was going to put in there. Mm, maybe not. Like I do like the feather, although this one stamped better than this one. Or was I just planning to put this old paper in there? Maybe what I should do is to make it ease of insertion a little better. Rather than tearing the edges, which would have been my impulse, I'm going to... Uh, cut a nice straight edge. I used to um, 
be baffled by YouTubers who were using these quilting guides because I thought, oh, for heaven's sakes, they're so unwieldy. And they're so unwieldy. Some of them are better than others by the looks of it. I just bought this the other day because it was a bit smaller. You saw that move initially, which could be. Sometimes it doesn't matter. You just, you know, try again. Other times, that's critical because that cut was well placed. Anyway, um, the beauty of um, quilting squares or quilting rulers I have a couple others that are bigger. One of them also seems to have a bit of a gripper on the bottom side, is that everything is straight and true and plumb. So it's easy to line it up to any one of those marks. Uh, and those are eighths of an inch. And see if your paper, your object is in fact square. So it it does save a step. So. I'm a new believer. Okay, I might just leave it that at that. We'll hopefully, I don't think, I don't feel any glue, so hopefully it's not, but I should probably. Um, I thought I had nearby. No, not that. I did, believe it or not, clean a spot. I just use some of this wax paper to make sure this doesn't glue onto this. This uh, is probably a page I haven't seen either. I'd say essentially complete. So then the back, I thought this could be a bit bumpier because it is the back. So I've attached another one of those medallions. I made this belly band with three layers of lace and I did this journaling card who doesn't love owls old paper and a button tab to make to let people know that well to help get it in and out and also to let people know that there is something that is removable oh I'm at the end of the line here so I would promise to show you so if I were to add another page, as was my intention, I have to, you know, I had this figured out yesterday. I would have to attach this here. Am I saying that right? Oh, for heaven's sakes. I knew what I was talking about yesterday. <laughs> okay, let me think this through. Yes, this would have to be hinged here to to give it the next the next fold. No, I'm still saying it wrong. It would have to be like so. But you can see, I've already finished this page by gluing down some music paper, so I'm not about to do that. Anyway, um, suffice it to say that if you're trying to do this at home, with regardless of what kind of paper, you will be able to figure out what needs to be attached to what in order for it to fold properly. So let's dig in on the other side. Um, you've seen that before probably, again, I reinforced with um, washi tape. Go back here for a minute. This is too big. It's preventing. Okay. This is a side tuck, and I used a fabric uh, and paper cluster. It's got some lace some paper, a little stamped piece of fabric that I slow stitched a little board around and I added some bling. I 
don't think I had anything prepared to tuck in there. If I do, I've, I've misplaced it. So here are a couple other little things that I prepared and I thought could go on this page. So this is part of a cover from an old needlework uh, pattern book. And, oh, kind of, when we say messy stitching, we're not kidding. I used some uh, vellum. A bit of lace. This was the original price tag on the booklet. A little paper. Oh, see, this is ragged here. Yeah, this paper didn't take well to the sewing. And the sewing didn't take well to the paper. But I thought that I would glue this down as a pocket. And um, that, of course, would stabilize it. And then the only in and out would be through the top. Yeah, so let's, oh, I should have laid this baby down. Okay, so what I'm going to do, once that glue starts flowing again, is glue around three sides and create a pocket. Then I use this, and I think that these, this is, um, this is part of a digital kit that I believe I got from, uh, which craft do you do? And these little fabric sample holder thingamajigs came in multiple colors and multiple sizes. So what I did was pick a few little, well, mostly lace, and um, that roughly bit of um, little strip of... Um, just, well, I don't know, I guess it could be an old bed sheet or something like that. And gathered them up and sort of spread them out a bit and then just made a line of stitching across the top to hold them. Sometimes gluing is just as good, but that's how I chose to do it. So one other trick, and I don't think I've ever made this mistake because I, I did learn this lesson early from watching other YouTubers, Oopsie, so, something, something is collapsing here, is you always pick it up, you hold it by the side you don't want to glue so that you're not accidentally applying glue to the wrong edge of the... Put a little more in this corner that is compromised. And of course, there's two two opinions on on the dangly thread uh, scenario. Some people like it, some people don't. I guess if you buy a journal from someone who has left the threads, it's easy enough to cut them off. If you happen to like threads and they're gone, <laughs> not much you can do about that. So you can see that even on this really old paper, I'm able to roll off any of that glue that um, squeezed out. Uh, and you know I did put more in this corner because of the, um, the fact that the sewing machine sort of tore that corner as I was stitching it. Okay, so good adhesion. Oh, this is the torn corner. So I added more glue here. This was the one that had the kind of sloppy, the sloppy end to the stitching. Okay, so that is down. Now with this, I want people to be able to pick it up, look at, you know, front and back. So I'm just going to Oh, I could even do it that way. I don't know. Maybe that's not the smartest idea I've ever had. What might be better, and I bet you I don't have any here within reach, 
is using this, putting something else in the pocket. You know, another thing that I have ready here are other fussy cut owls. Now, mind you, if I glue this somebody down here, it will take a little bit of abuse as things go in and out. I might have to ponder that a bit more. Looks like I don't have anything ready for, well, I guess I could stick this in for the time being, just as a reminder that I should look for something else. The other thing I have here in front of me are these other little Clusters. Now, you may have seen me show these the other day. They are, and again, I'm sorry I didn't make a note of who, who had created them initially. They're basically little snippets of either lace or fabric, a tiny bit of felt, slow stitched, and then embellished with a charm or something. So again, in keeping with my color scheme, I don't have a lot of options here. This one would work, so I could put that there. Again, because I envision that this book, this concertina, will be displayed standing up. Here's another one. That's maybe a bit shiny. Um, you know, I'm not that, that concerned about the bulk that might be created. Here's another one that's a teeny bit smaller. Maybe I should use that one instead. Now I cannot use this as a traditional tab unless it was at the top. Yeah. There's more bulk, there tends to be more bulk at the bottom of the page, so let's let's just glue this at the top and see it doesn't take long for this to plug. Kind of liberal with the glue. Because I have two layers of fabric here, I'm not concerned about any glue showing through. That just adds a bit of interest at the top of the page if the book is closed or if it's standing on its uh, on its edge. Okay, we'll leave that as it is for the time being and let's move on to the next page. So what I thought I would do here is create a belly band with this with these butterflies that I stamped on um, a piece of vellum. We know, oh, where's that paper that I, I did have, I did have a nice piece of, uh, paper that I was going to use at the top to cover any glue marks. You will see that glue affects vellum, and that's probably too much. It tends to make the paper, whoops, wavy. Doesn't help that I slopped a little on there. Did that make it better or worse? Okay, I'm going to sort of center this. I, I did pre-cut it so that it basically lines up with um, with the edge of the 
uh, German book page. Whoopsie. Yeah, by pressing that down, I created a wider... more excess to rub off. Okay, let's maybe let um, time and gravity, I won't, I'll stop touching that. I hope that before this is over, I find that nice little piece of paper that I had intended to use at the top to disguise that, I suspected that there would be a problem. I suppose another thing I could do is, is this ribbon, is this bow, I mean. However, that little knot there does create a bit more bulk. I also have some of these... Um, Stick, well, they're not stickers, but these, these sentiments that I could use in between, that would help disguise it as well. I'm going to leave the top space blank because I'm sure that paper is going to show up either while I'm still um, running the video or immediately after I turn off the camera. So for this, I think the least uh, visible would be using glue stick. So I'm going to just randomly pick words. Oh, I have to make sure they don't extend. Oh, they are stickers. But again, we don't trust. I'm going to make sure I don't pick long words that extend wider than the belly band because that will create a problem when trying to add anything in or out. Maybe I'll deliberately offset it a bit. Sorry, I need to pick that up and see if it's straight. Okay, wonder. Wonder. Let's do another W word. Put this one off to the side. You can also see that the spacing that I did between the um, uh, between the words, where did that card go? Honestly, when people talk about gremlins, no, oh, it doesn't matter. I was going to look for that. Oh, there it is. Hotel card, just to apply a little even pressure till we have adhesion. Okay, I'm going to leave that there in the hopes that that other piece of paper shows up. If it doesn't, I will do some another word near the top. Okay, then on this page, this will be a job for, for Art Glitter Glue. I know what I wanted to do. I finally broke down and bought some Tim Holtz people. These are the little ones, and I didn't realize, because of course you can't tell in the package, that they are on a heavier uh, weight of paper, like a cardstock or something. So what I thought would be kind of cool is to use them to create another pocket here. So I'd line up several of these guys. But of course, if I just do it like so, that will be a place for 
things to get caught, like, you know. So I need to mount them to something. I better not forget about that. So I thought, and this is just a book page out of one of those albums, you know, where you, you're supposed to add photos and journal and, and talk about family history and all of that. So I think what I'll do instead is just... I guess I should never. So many people are... Oh, wait, I should actually measure these people. How wide are how wide are seven people? Okay, from the edge of her skirt, you see this, from the edge of her skirt to the his sleeve is roughly four and three eighths. So if I make this, is that going to be too yellowy? Maybe not. Okay. I'm going to reach for the better, the grippier. Quilting square. Now I said four and three eighths, but I'll bump it up to four and a half because I do have the space. I've lined it up on two sides, so I know I'm going to be square. And in order to oh, it would have been good. Oh, I see. I'm doing it this way, so it doesn't matter. I can still make the pocket as I had myself confused there for a second, wondering what am I doing? What am I doing? Okay, I want the pocket to be deep enough so that their little heads are glued down and not, you know, poking out above, creating problems. Hmm. So give them about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. I want to be able to double this up. So three and a quarter, six and a half. So six and a half long. So again, I'm aligning two sides with these red. You probably can't see a darn thing. Uh, to make sure it's square. And again, this time I care about square. When I'm rough tearing something or using a tearing ruler, clearly I don't care about square. So, you know, we're entitled to, to change the rules as necessary for the situation at hand. Okay, so that is going to be my reinforced pocket. I could have made it wider, you know, because I have this black space here. I suppose I could also add some lace. Okay. First we glue this together. And again, it doesn't have to be the greatest gluing job in the world. Because it's just, you know, giving it a little bit of rigidity. 
but in fact it will be glued down on the edges once I attach the people. Okay, so I think I have, or maybe I'll put these people, the couple on the side. Start out with those boys. I guess their arms could extend past there. Why not? Yeah, why not? Okay. Maybe I could put them a little, let them stand on that line. Okay, so the trick is, maybe I'll glue the girls down first. So I'm going to use our glitter glue. Now I suppose I could have used Fabri-Tac. That, oops. That might be overkill though in this situation. Another thing that wasn't properly punched out. Did you see how I just saved the day at the last moment? Now, sometimes if the rolling is not as effect, the rolling of excess glue is not as effective as other times. I think I've shown you this before. It is, um, sometimes, uh, you know, it can abrade the surface of the paper or make a bit of a mess. So you kind of have to be careful about that. Now what I should probably do is glue down the pocket and then how, however, See, and I'm going to leave that line showing. Then she excused herself and went to her room to fill in the blanks. If I attach the pocket, then if their arms extend or elbows extend past the um, edge of the pocket, it's okay. I won't have, um, maybe I will offset this a bit. Again, just a little bit of pressure. How come I don't have a wet one beside me? And again, by, by doubling over this paper, I've made the pocket stronger. And, have, and frankly, having these people attached. Sorry, I have to lift this up. Seems a little crooked. <sighs> oh. That's better. Boy, I'm so oh see, this is what I was looking for. Um I'm surprised that that worked, to be honest, because usually the grip is so immediate. Okay, or is everything punched out that should be? I, um, this is a Friday as I'm taping this, so I don't know, of course, when you're watching this, but I hope that you're having a wonderful day, no matter what day it is. I hope that you're well. I hope that you are taking or making <laughs> time to craft and do something that you love. It does make this whole human journey more worthwhile. Um, it shouldn't be 
a drudge. It shouldn't be a grind. There should be some joy interspersed with all our grown-up duties as well. So hopefully you are making that happen. Hopefully you agree with me on that and are taking tangible steps to make sure it happens for you as well. Okay, let this guy's elbow extend past the page a bit. Again, lifting. These guys look a little bit lower. That's okay, they're not all the same height. Okay, this is the little piece of paper that I was hoping to use here. Uh, so that's obviously going to go down. I had printed this on cardstock. It was part of a digital. Of course, I don't remember who or what or when. But if, I'll put it high enough that it covers any glue blobs that exist. That's good. Yes, and it doesn't really interfere with putting anything into the pocket. Let's say this guy, this owl was on a, now the other reason that, um, the other reason I didn't give you a first reason. The reason I have this pouch here is that these are some fussy cuts that I did from some of my own digitals. And uh, obviously some of them don't work. But others, I mean, don't work, you know, color-wise. These are medallions and cameos and, um, you know, some ancient artworks. So, and of course, once these things have been fussy cut, let's get rid of these rope, not get rid of, but let's move them out of the way. And there were some that were blue. There's some jewels. So all sorts of sizes and colors. Well, that's the same. Hmm. I should have pre-selected some of these, don't you think? Don't you think? Don't you think? Let's get rid of the colorful ones that aren't in the running. That's lovely. I would also cut. Oh, speaking of cutting little tricky spots, I invested in one of these the other day, and this is how it works. Um, and of course, you use a cutting mat, and it swivels a bit. So it's a lot easier to make smoother cuts in those little tight corners. So maybe if you've got arthritic hands or uh, aren't as steady as you once were, then it is um, a good thing to, to consider. Um, I, I really love it, to be honest. Okay, let's get rid of... No, those guys are... Okay. that aside. So what I could do, I do that is probably, well that's not too wide. That could become a journaling card if I attach it to something. Or how about a round one? I do that, that uh, brown is straying a bit from the from the color family that I'm using. Hmm. How would this guy look? I mean, there is a bit of, that may be a better one, you know? And if I, and if I keep my backing, Yeah, having it a uh, kind of an unusual shape, I think would be nice for a change. That's too small. That's too small. Okay, we'll we'll leave 
Maybe we can do two. Oops. Don't stand him on his head. Yeah, we can do a couple of those because I, I think I had other areas that uh, needed something as well. So, okay. How are we doing for time? Ooh, 55 minutes. Uh, what more do I want to do here? Okay, I reserve the right to maybe back this after the camera's turned off because honestly, you don't need to see me glue and cut. Um, and in fact, mind you, this guy could also... Okay, let's just leave it at this. I will... Oh, that's a weird one. I will back some stuff either <laughs> he looks kind of nice there I will back this owl for this page I will back these two for this page and let's move on to okay I don't you probably didn't see this page but what I did I just took one of these little papers out of these Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, I believe. Um, these little blocks of paper. There are a hundred in there. I picked one that I thought was okay, and then I added on one of those little twall um, tab, made a tab out of it. Washi tape. This is a fabric thing that's intended, I guess, to be sewn on something. This is Tim Holtz tissue paper. Okay. Oh, I also wanted to use this somewhere. This is part of, this is one of the little quilting, um, fabric covered little, no, fabric little quilting things that I bought in an assorted box. Uh, I don't think I had a final destination for it. And of course, by itself, it's not enough. Hey, maybe one of these smaller. Would a cameo look good on? Not that guy. Not that attractive. What is this? That's like a goat or something. That's too big. I might be able to find one of the cameos. Oh, there's this guy. We'll see. I'll add something, uh, something to this. Maybe it'll end up being a button. Who knows? So that I can add that somewhere else. But one, the the, the last thing I want to do in here before I let you go is. Oh, and I love this too. This is a bookmark from a store, a beautiful um, secondhand store in Canmore, Alberta. And we have a timeshare there. So, you know, once a year I go. And this was always a favorite destination. So then, and this is several years ago now, uh, long before COVID, it might have been, the, oh, it was the year of the big Calgary floods and all the rain that fell that year. And and of course, Canmore isn't that far from Calgary. Anyway, long story short, this place, which was in the basement of a building on Main Street, <coughs> oh, excuse me, no longer exists because, of course, it flooded. And what a devastating piece of news that was. So uh, because the color is good, I intend to... Hey, if I trim the branch and cut the bottom, oh, that would be perfect. Okay, that's the plan for here. That was devastating because those of us who love books, you know, we just cringe at the thought of, of all that being um, damaged, destroyed, wasted. So 
that's terrible. And of course, you know, he's never reopened. And I think this thing says, established in 98. So like, I mean, the business was probably, you know, 20 years old or so at the time. I absolutely, because I have some chairs like this uh, <clears throat> in my own collection, I just love this die cut. And I did a bunch in several colors, including this cardstock color. And I love them. And so far, I've been hoarding them. So what I wanted to do, and again, this is a job for Art Glitter Glue, is just sort of arrange them artfully <laughs> on a page. Not make them be anything or do anything other than what they are. Cute, cute, cute. So, let's, I can lift up my, or, or, yeah, my fabric tack. So what I'm going to do is start with the first one and then layer accordingly. And again, this probably is not that terribly interesting to you because it's glue and it's paper <clears throat> and it's fiddly work. However... We can either sit here in silence and as you're mesmerized by the gluing process, or I can keep talking essentially to myself since there's nobody else in the room. Um, and marvel at these old chairs with the spindle backs. I mean the little skinny little spindles. Oops. And a lot of them had like three board, may, well, maybe four, three or four boards that created the seat. And over time, you know, glue dries and, and then the seat cracks and you know, becomes a pinching hazard. <laughs> Unless you do some repairs. Can't dilly dally with this glue, you know, because it dries so fast. Uh, it's counterintuitive where I have to put my project so it's on the right side of my desk, <laughs> you know, the left side of my desk, which is the right side of my desk for uh, the camera and where it's... So I need to have enough overlap so that this white chair is not lost. It doesn't really matter where this guy ends. So keep on going. Anyway, yeah, these chairs have a lot of um, charm. <clears throat> when we had our uh, flower and gift shop, at, at one point we expanded this. Uh, well, we didn't expand the space. We changed the function of the space to have a tea room. And we had these kind of vintage chairs around these um uh, you know, little vintage tables, and it was it was cute. I have to say they're not the most comfortable chairs in the world, but uh, from a cuteness or a nostalgia perspective, they are the cat's meow. And I just thought this was a nice way to do this page because, of course, it's German... Um, music paper. So, you know, if you have nice paper, you don't really want to cover it up with everything or anything, maybe. So this way I get the best of both worlds. And again, don't need to cover every square inch of this, but enough to because it, it glues so darn well, it um, it takes traditionally very little glue. And I also don't want it oozing out and making a big mess. Getting caught on a spindle. Okay, final chair in position. Maybe we'll let this go down almost to the bottom of the page. 
And if I find, you know, as I'm flipping through this again, that something is lifted, of course, I just go in and, and touch it up with a speck of glue here and there. Whoops. The other thing that I pulled out today, uh, thinking I might use, are some of these word uh, stamps. I find that the ones that are like this, as opposed to the ones with the black background and the sort of the negative space, stamp better. I'll keep them nearby in case I feel that they are needed. And I think, my lovelies, that I will call it a day on this one. I do have a bit of homework left to do. When I am, oh, and I need something for here as well. That might be another opportunity for another owl, or I can find a black and white flower image. Because I do want to stick, oh, and I still have this to use somewhere. I also had these little guys that came as part of something or other. They're little acetate. Uh, little pieces of acetate. That looks pretty graphic on there. I'll see what I end up doing with those because it, it's, again, one of those. Oh, and I have this. I found this in among my ribbon stuff. Oh, I know what. Are, I have millions of pieces of these because it came as part of one of those invita wedding invitation kits you know, where you loop it through or glue it or something or other. I also have brown paper bits. I also have old book paint. So anyway, okay, I'm not going to make you watch uh, a decision process. Not today, anyway. And that's old paper. That's from an old magazine. Um, I'm not going to make you watch uh, the decision-making process. Not today, anyway. I'm not going to make you watch me cut and glue anymore because we've been, we've, uh, you've invested a lot of time already. But I will, once I have this done, I'll do a quick flip through. I guess I will also be deciding once and for all if I want to part with this or not. I'm, I'm really... There's some black eyelet also and some black lace that could, might find its way in here. Um, <laughs> the problem is that, you know, when it's your first, your first concertina, your first whatever, I don't necessarily want to part with it, but we'll see. If I decide that I want to put it in my Etsy shop or just, you know, gauge interest i'll do that uh, but regardless of what of how that turns out i will show you I'll, I'll do a flip through just so that we um you see that i i completed my the task at hand so um oh my goodness i forgot to bring my little is it still over Oh, yeah, I can wave across the room to my little sheet that asks you to please subscribe, like, comment, and share. Uh, if you hit the notification, if you subscribe and hit the notification button, bell, you will also um, be notified every time I upload a video. And um, who knows, that just might uh, be a good thing both for you and for me. So thank you so much for joining me. I will continue to, uh, I'll finish this once the camera is turned off and I'll show you how it turns out. Thanks, bye, and stay well and keep creating.